It's been over 1,000 days, 1,089 to be exact, since Warzone launched all the way back on March 10th of 2020, and while I'll have a video detailing and going a bit more in-depth for the anniversary of the mode upcoming, I wanted to navigate the landscape that was drastically different on day one in this video today. Today, we're returning to Verdansk day one and the experience we all got to take part in. As we go along, drop your thoughts below. How do you feel about Verdansk, whether in day one or all the way up to the final days of Verdansk 84 before Caldera dropped? Whatever the case, drop your thoughts below, and if you're new to the channel, you like retrospective deep dives at all, and you like to stay on top of everything Modern Warfare 2 or anything COD related, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button and join the community. I'd love to have you. And finally, this video is brought to you in part by my friends over at Apex Gaming PCs, but more on them in a bit. But for now, let's take a look at Verdansk all the way back on day one. So the interesting part about Verdansk in day one is that the story of Verdansk actually predates that introduction of Warzone and the launch of the Battle Royale and Plunder experiences. For the first time in the Call of Duty franchise, we had a world given to us, but unbeknownst to nearly every player, that world was seen well before the launch date of the premium experience, and then even so with the launch of the premium experience. Around roughly September 21st, the start of the open beta for Weekend 2, a month earlier than the game's launch, players were subjected to Ground War and firstly, that initial introductory map of Car River Quarry. Now, while that iteration, and still to this day, that iteration is the only ground war map experience that's disconnected from the rest, it was our first interaction with the world of Verdansk, a point of interest later set identically in the Plunder, Battle Royale, and kind of Spec Ops experience as well, but it was our first foray into that world that would be Verdansk. Now, with the launch of the game, the use of the world of Verdansk would become much more apparent, as in ground war you'd be able to see existing locations, even off in the distance, connected to the outskirts of said multi player in Ground War maps. Tvorsk District, for example, or Downtown Verdansk, showcased the outskirts of Hospital, the Port of Verdansk, and a map that we'd see in just a few weeks' time after the launch of the game in Kravnik Farmland. The world had already been established, and if you went into Spec Ops, you could even see more of that and the more immediately available world of Verdansk, like Verdansk Airport, Storage Town, and even more. Eventually, more Ground War maps were added, some before and some after the reveal of Verdansk, but it was something that from the very beginning, it was there, just waiting to be revealed just kind of under the radar. The one thing that really always stands out to me with the sort of early Modern Warfare time frame is that before the launch of Modern Warfare 2, myself, other content creators, and like actual genuine press like IGN and other gaming journalism sites like that, we took part in a pre-release capture event so that we could end up having content ready for the embargo to talk about the new game, put up guides and stuff like that. And one of the things that we did in that capture session was play Spec Ops early before the game launched. And I was sitting there, I think my squad was exclusive ace ink slasher and one of the heads of pr dealing with content creators at activision and i just remember saying i was like you know this really seems like something that could be a battle royale map and the answer i got was i don't know what you're talking about so from all things that we had seen it was just there waiting to be revealed and that was something we'd have to wait a little bit longer beyond the launch of the game. However, all of that came to a head on February 11th of 2020, notably the release date of Season 2 for Modern Warfare 2019. In that update, we got a handful of new content, of course, but there were two things that really stood out that players kind of went into a frenzy over when thinking about what was still upcoming. First, the intro cinematic for the season. When you booted up Modern Warfare 2019 for the first time after that update, you were met with a new cinematic about how Ghost was investigating a situation which seeming allies in the Modern Warfare universe were all turning on each other with the iconic Price, there's something wrong in Verdansk voice line and a cutaway to the world around him outside of Verdansk International Airport being a war zone pun partially intended, and a C-130 dropping players off with the gas in the distance. It was just something that was our first look at Warzone and the whole of the gameplay experience that we'd see sooner rather than later. Additionally, Season 2 also introduced a new sliver on the main menu that was listed and labeled as classified and would stay like that for a few weeks at that point. Now, to add on top of all of that, with the introduction of Atlas Superstore and the 6v6 map rotation with the seasonal launch, this not necessarily being one of those immediate two things that put players into a frenzy, but people really started to examine it, was a new free cam spectating bug that came up with that map of Atlas Superstore, where players could go outside of the boundaries of the 6v6 map and see the world around, again, another major tease of Verdansk and the surrounding landscape that, at this point, we had all kind of knew was there for maybe a battle royale, but it just was never specified officially. That is, until March 10th of 2020. That was the launch of Warzone, and what you're watching in the background is a few snippets of some of those earliest games from launch, and if you couldn't tell, well, the game was much different then. Warzone 1 at the end of the Caldera era in November here this past year was a completely different game than the first iterations of Warzone as we knew it in early 2020. From movement, weapon air quote metas, and all, it was entirely different. 
and for a surprisingly longer window than I anticipated. The game really had no defined best play experiences. You could just use about any weapon you wanted, you could play however you wanted. You'd see these learning curves develop in real time with players, a sort of more genuine and grounded balancing of gameplay, not something like a manipulative matchmaking system that cherry picked players on a number of different factors, but instead it was just coming down to things like simplest of outplay mechanics and such that could give you a leg up. Simply if you learn things faster than some enemies, if you knew jump spots, you knew rotations of zones, the list could go on and on for things, but the game was slower, more tactical, but also rewarded players for their knowledge of the game at that point because it was new to everyone. And talking some of that gameplay, I don't think that I'll ever look back at some of my original gameplays and not think to myself, man, these weapon selections are just hilarious. Because, I mean, one of the weapon loadouts of choice that I used was a no-stock M4. I wanted that mobility in ADS that you could get with it, but like, that's not a build you want by any means. You could, sure, use it, but I ran it kind of like a hybrid AR SMG that you'd see in MP, and even at that point, maybe not the best choice. Maybe earlier in the life cycle of Modern Warfare 2019, but like, looking back, I'm just reminded of how odd some of those builds were. I distinctly remember a few builds having some genuine significance, though, like the EBR had potential to two-shot kill, I think it was, with a bugged blueprint at a time, offering the ability to one-shot down someone. That, of course, being a bug, but no less. Thermo sights also on snipers were the absolute meta for a while, since Coldblooded really Really wasn't a perk that many players took for a long while and the render distance for quite a bit of time didn't expire at a distance with those scopes so you could see players that were well off in the distance where there wouldn't even be a world or environment rendered around them additionally weapons like the aug and the 556 five, rounds made it one of those weapons that you look back and you're like wait a second that was actually a good choice to use. I mean, because at that point you had the mobility of an SMG and comparable fire rate therein, but more damage in those 5.56 five, rounds. So there was a lot of different gameplay courses of action, but with a much smaller subset of weaponry also at the time, no integrations of the Cold War and Vanguard weaponry, no seasonal content beyond season two and the bloating on offer, it really was a relatively tame experience where you could use just about everything in your arsenal. Now, before I move on, I wanna let you know about my friends over at Apex Gaming PCs, a performance build company here that I've been working working with the last few months. If you've seen the videos, you've seen the gameplay and the just absolute incredible performance of my rig and what they're capable of. Whether you want to go overkill like me and have a 4090 powering your gaming and workstation, making renders and edits a breeze, pushing 200 plus FPS at 4K ultra res, or just something more basic like a starter PC, they've got you covered with the best hardware and service, everything you could want. If you'd like to head over to the link in the description below and learn more, they've got a few custom tailored built systems for the community already built there that can either be fully custom customized or purchased as is to make the process as simple as possible. Additionally, if you use code ESPRESSO, that'll let you a few hundred off your next order, so check the link in the description below if you're at all interested to learn more about Apex Gaming PCs or pick up something for yourself, and thanks to Apex Gaming PCs for sponsoring this video. But that said, now let's get back to the regular scheduled content. I think perhaps the biggest system shock, though, if you were to go and somehow jump back to day one of the launch of Verdansk, like from today, just time machine back, I think the biggest shock would be the pace of play that you'd see. I mean, firstly, just like we're dealing with right now in the rollout of additional playlists for Resurgence on Ashika Island in Warzone 2, Warzone only launched in trios for Battle Royale, so we didn't have solos, duos, and quads at that point, but to be fair, with the initial launch of Warzone, I do think it was kind of a fair play, a legitimate concern on actual server stress. It was going to be the first time we saw an influx in player count like never before seen, being that Call of Duty was taking its first entry into free-to-play. It was a larger world operating with 150 players at a time, so that was definitely uncharted territory for the franchise, so rolling it out progressively did kind of make sense then. Now, not so much, but that's a different story for a different day. Solos, duos, and quads all came later, but regardless of if you played initially in trios on day one or a few weeks later than any of the other playlists, the gameplay pace itself was much different. There was no movement or slide canceling metas that were defined by that point that you'd see every single player cracked out of their mind using. There was some aggressive play that you could end up seeing, absolutely, but it wasn't until like a little later on where you'd start seeing 30 bombs dropped and things of those higher kill counts. The first few weeks for my my recollection were relatively slow in pace. Players wanted to get their first victories and weren't really willing to risk it all for that much. They didn't go guns a blazing as quickly or as often as they would have a few weeks, months, and years down the line by comparison. Now, other things that were quirky about the gameplay loop itself was that, firstly, one of the big ones was, for a little while, kills were granted initially to the player that ended up cleaning up downed kills, not the player that ended up doing the damage to actually down them. That was something that I think stuck around for a couple of weeks, maybe even a couple of months after the launch of Warzone and that Verdansk Day 1 era. Additionally, there was a lot of stuff that was not so commonplace. Things like your armor sack.
satchels. That was one of the biggest things I think that was a main fundamental adjustment that made the game play better was being able to carry more plates, that eight total that you had on offer. Though, again, not existing in Warzone 2.0. Interesting to see that differentiation now at this point. A lot of zipline locations were missing from what we saw with Verdansk 84 and things of that nature where we finished at that point in the Verdansk era. Honestly, I would seriously love to see how Warzone would play in the sort of Caldera-esque era of Warzone and the fundamental gameplay changes that we saw there. Things like your redeploy balloons, things like your lootable perks, your redeploy tokens, stuff like that. I honestly thought made the pace of play way more fun to play with, but also encouraged more aggressive gameplay, allowing you to get into the action, but not necessarily penalizing you where you spent 15 minutes playing aggressive, but then you ended up dying to somebody sitting in a corner or mounted up in a window across the street or something like that. It gave you more reason to play aggressive, but didn't penalize you as much. And I honestly think that with some of those sort of situations with balloons, the zip lines, everything we saw towards the end of the Warzone 1 experience, I think that that would have played very well in the original Verdansk and Verdansk 84. But I guess we'll never know. That's one of those things that we'll probably never see Verdansk come back in the way that we did. So being able to see how that would play by comparison is probably just a pipe dream. Now, other things that were really cool with Verdansk, even at day one, were some Easter eggs. Granted, we didn't have the ability to do things like our Bunker 11 Easter egg. That didn't come along until Season 3, a couple of weeks to maybe a month or two later at that point. And then also we saw things further out down the line, like the Stadium Easter egg and the Subway Station Easter egg as well. But even from the very beginning, it set up not only the narrative, but also some clues is that we'd see things like the Bunker 11 Easter egg. Those phones, those bunkers, those laptops, which the laptops were actually never used for anything, a sort of missed opportunity if you ask me, but those things were all there from day one and had teasers that more stuff would be upcoming. Right now, we might have one or two things here like that in Almazra, maybe a little bit in Ashika Island, but really a little disappointed that in the Warzone 2 counterpart here, we haven't seen too much progress a story, progress something that looks to be Easter eggs in the future, whereas Warzone came out of the gate on day one in Verdansk and gave us some of those hints that we'd be seeing a lot more of the stuff in the future. So that was awesome to be able to discover and explore the world of Verdansk day one. But honestly, man, looking back, it was it was a different game and something that I'm sure that we all have fond memories on. And as such, we might be able to realize just how much of an impact not only this had on us in the Call of Duty franchise, but overall in the gaming space as a whole. Verdansk is long considered the map when it comes to Warzone, but especially from day one, there were certainly problems. I definitely think we cannot look over some of the things that we had issues with. I mean, one-way entry points, one-way angles, building rooftops, ATC and airport, top of airport for a long while. There are a lot of things that definitely, as time went on, there were mistakes that were corrected in design, inability to play the game and outplay. I think that we definitely look back with some rose-tinted glasses, but I also don't think that that's necessarily the worst thing ever. No doubt it had a ton of awesome things that we talked about already, but there were some issues. However, on the flip side, focusing more on the positive, it introduced millions of players to Call of Duty, soaring past the highest player counts ever seen previously with premium games in mere days. I mean, they passed literally the golden era of COD and Modern Warfare 2, Black Ops, Modern Warfare 3, Black Ops 2. They surpassed those player numbers in days after releasing Warzone. That's the power of free to play and for better or for worse, it was something that converted a lot of those players into Modern Warfare 2019 premium players, Black Ops Cold War premium players, maybe Vanguard to a degree. I don't know how many people really stuck around for that one, but I mean, it was something that made Call of Duty a household name once again. And for me, as a fan of the franchise, I loved that. I loved seeing friends that I had played with way back in the day come back and be like, hey, Jordan, have you have you played Warzone at all? I mean, it's it's pretty fun. I'm liking for Verdansk. I'm liking what we have here. And it was nice to be able to reconnect you with that. But also, at the time, it was one of the most powerful things that we had here because if you guys remember, I mean, March of 2020, the world kind of went down the drain. And it was something that everybody was locked in their houses, locked down, trying to stay safe and healthy. So a lot of people, gaming was an out. And sometimes even the only out that we had to escape and give us some happiness, some serotonin, allowing you to stay connected with friends, family, and people that you cared about over the course of gaming and Call of Duty. So in that regard, that's one of the biggest things that I take away from Verdansk Day 1 is that it was a perfect storm, as messed up as that may sound where you sort of think about it and you're like, wow, at that point, that was the perfect time for it. 
It really was. I mean, it was something that I don't think that Warzone would have had as much an explosive experience if the memes and pop culture didn't come out of this and that a lot of people just didn't have anything more to do than play Warzone. But again, it was a perfect storm. You have this product, you have a map that's engaging, fun to play with, and a gameplay loop that, again, encouraged you to come back and try to do better. Verdansk Day 1 was that storm that you look back and amidst all the chaos, you have some fond memories of. So for that, that's what we're going to call it. Again, we are coming up on the three-year anniversary of Warzone. As crazy as that sounds, we're working on a video here that hopefully will be up on March 10th here to celebrate. But for now, that's what we're going to call it. Want to just take a trip down memory lane here to kick off your weekend. Hopefully, you guys are having a good one. Let me know your thoughts down below. Do you guys like reminiscing about Verdansk Day 1? Do you guys miss those simpler times, perhaps? Something that, of course, comes with every single COD cycle. Do you guys like these deep dive retrospective videos just chatting about the past and where we came from? Whatever the case, drop your thoughts down below. But if you enjoyed the video, you found it at all insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. So a single thing getting all things Modern Warfare 2, Warzone 2, and of course, Warzone retrospective stuff like this, along with other COD content. I'd love to have you in the community if you guys are at all new. But for now, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.